Yeah, in this particular instance, Paul uses an example of Adam and Eve, and, and it can come across as, as very confusing to some or frustrating. And one of the advantages of living in the latter days, uh, with the benefit of prophets, seers, and revelators on the earth with us, is we can look to them to help us interpret what does the Lord want us to know about these situations today. So, in this particular instance of, of Adam and Eve and questions around the fall and men's and women's roles, let's see what modern prophets have taught us. It was Eve who first transgressed the limits of Eden in order to initiate the conditions of mortality. Her act, whatever its nature, was formally a transgression, but eternally a glorious necessity to open the doorway toward eternal life. Adam showed his wisdom by doing the same, and thus Eve and Adam fell, that man might be. Some Christians condemn Eve for her act, concluding that she and her daughters are somehow flawed by it, not the Latter-day Saints. Informed by revelation, we celebrate Eve's act and honor her wisdom and courage in the great episode called The Fall. Eve was a heavenly blessing in Adam's life. Through her divine nature and spiritual attributes, she inspired Adam to work in partnership with her to achieve God's plan of happiness for all mankind. The Savior Himself invites all of us, God's children, to come to Him, to partake of His goodness, and He denieth none that come unto Him. Therefore, in this context, we are considered equal before Him. When spouses understand and incorporate this principle, they do not position themselves as president or vice president of their family. There is no superiority nor inferiority in the marriage relationship, and neither walks ahead for off or behind the other. They walk side by side as equals the divine offspring of God. They are equal partners, equal in their potential for spiritual growth and for acquiring knowledge, and so are unified by helping each other. They are equal in their divine destiny to be exalted together. In fact, men and women cannot be exalted alone. Why then does a daughter of God in a united and equal relationship receive the primary responsibility to nourish with the most important nutrient all must receive, a knowledge of truth coming from heaven. As nearly as I can see, that has been the Lord's way since families were created in this world. For instance, it was Eve who received the knowledge that Adam needed to partake of the fruit of the tree of knowledge for them to keep all of God's commandments and to form a family. I, don't know, I do not know why it came to Eve first, but Adam and Eve were perfectly united when the knowledge was poured out on Adam. Women see things differently than men do. And oh, how we need your perspective. Your nature leads you to think of others first to consider the effect that any course of action will have on others. As President Eyring has pointed out, it was our glorious Mother Eve, with her far-reaching vision of our Heavenly Father's plan, who initiated what we call the Fall. Her wise and courageous choice and Adam's supporting decision moved God's plan of happiness forward. They made it possible for each of us to come to Earth, to receive a body, and prove that we would choose to stand up for Jesus Christ now, just as we did pre-mortally. Let's not overlook the, the beautiful blessing we have of prophets, seers, and revelators.